Good morning, crafty peeps. I'm so glad you joined me today. And today I'm going to be showing you how to watercolor on a sand dollar. Um, it is not extremely easy to watercolor on a sand dollar because, as you know, they're from the ocean, so they're extremely porous. And it's kind of hard to control the flow of the painting. Okay, so I'm going to show you some techniques of how I do this. So this past Christmas, I made a bunch of sand dollar ornaments, and I wish I had one to show you, but I actually packed mine away. But um, at the end, I'll have one to show to you. As you know, we're going to make one. So anyway, these are some of the things you're going to need. One, a sand dollar. Now you can get these off of Amazon. I will have it linked down below in the about section and the comments. Okay, so you'll be able to find those. Also, you're going to need some watercolors. And my favorite place to get watercolors is from a store here in the USA called Shimmers. These are non-toxic and they're just beautiful colors. She has um, jewels. She has metals. She has what she calls grace. And I know she has many more. She has pearl. So you just got to check out her website. I'm also going to have that link down below. So Stacy, um, I'm so glad uh, to be doing this tutorial. So um, here we go. So one thing you're going to want to do is pick out the stamp you're going to want to use. And I like to use stamps that have um, the ability for me to paint and um, not be so complicating. So see this mom, this would take me quite a while. And since I try to make these um, a lot at one time or not at one time, but a lot in a day, shall I say, I like to pick out easier flowers. So my favorite is using the Tim Holtz sunflower and also this little, um, it looks like a poppy. Okay, so I think today um, I want to start off with the poppy. Okay. And then of course you want to have your stem. So here are some other things you're going to need. Um, I use, a, a stamp press. Okay. You're definitely going to want to have that in case you need to press down many times. Um, also you're going to need a permanent ink. Okay. This is the surface ink from Brutus Monroe called Gargo Gargoyle. I'll try to put the link down below for that as well. You're going to need a fine tip watercolor brush for this size stamp. Okay. And then this is going to be for my Mod Podge and I'm using matte. Okay. It's up to you what you want to use, but I think that the matte works really well in this situation. Um, We'll go through that in just a minute. Also, if you want to decorate the edges, you can use some glitter. So it kind of gives it that beachy, sandy look. Also, I use some other elements in here, okay? I also paint with Perfect Pearls. I know that's an embossing powder, but I use that as well. And I'll show you how I incorporate that technique. Um, you can also use sprays or anything else you want to use. But when I do use the sprays, um, I don't spray them straight out of the bottle. I usually dip my pen into the bottle and, um, not my pen, but my brush into the bottle and paint that way. Okay. Also, you're going to need a little cup of water. Let me see. Anything else I'm missing? Ah, the most important part of this whole project is tissue paper. This is actually going to be what you're going to put your stamp on. Okay. Because... As I said, watercolor is not going to work well on top of a sand dollar. So we need to actually have our palette to paint on, okay? Or our media to paint on. So I'm just going to trim off a part that isn't so wrinkly, okay? I just find that a lot easier. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. Oh, you're also going to need a heat gun. All right. So you're going to have to bake the ink onto here. Okay. So that's the best way I can describe it. And I kind of do this in several steps. Okay. So my first step is going to be lining this up on here. And I'm doing it on the dull side because apparently for this paper, there's a shiny side. I don't want the shiny side. So I'm going to pretty much guesstimate where I want to put my stamp and where I'm going to have my stem at. So I'm going to start right there and then I'm going to, 
I always love using my little bone folder to press down. Okay. And then I like to slide this under so that it keeps that paper in place. Okay. Works for me. I don't know if it'll work for you, but okay. So here we go. I'm going to use my black ink. You can use any color you want to, but um, black stands out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and that looks pretty good. I'm going to press it down. And please pull up gently, okay? Because if you don't, um, you're going to move this paper, okay? I'm going to do this one more time. All right. Now I'm going to try a new technique that I, I have done on other paper, but not this. So I'm just going to wipe off this black ink. Okay. And I'm going to try something a little bit new that I have not done with the watercolors yet. Okay. So let's just for giggles, see if this is going to work. Because if not, you won't see this part of the video if it didn't work. I can guarantee that because not that I don't like showing my bloopers. I just don't like wasting your time. So, okay, we're going to wipe that off. I'm going to grab my heat gun and I'm going to try to stay away from my flower. Okay. Because I do not want this paper to move. Just going to dry that really quick there. Don't get too close to your stamp because you're going to burn your stamp. I'm going to get out my embossing powder and my embossing ink pad and I will have these links down below. I got mine on Amazon. And I'm going to stamp down again. Okay. Then at this point, I can go ahead and move this off of here. Okay. Let me grab a piece of paper. Oops, that's not a big piece. Hold on, guys. I had one. Okay. Sorry, I got to kind of work quickly because I'm being slow, okay? This stuff dries up pretty fast. I'm just going to pour this on here. Okay. And if you don't trust it, you could probably do it again. There we go. All right, so I'm going to pour all of this excess back in. No sense in wasting. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my heat gun, okay? You'll know when the embossing, you'll know when the embossing is dry because it'll get much darker. Okay. Okay. I'm not as worried about the bottom as much. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point I can kind of get some of these tools out of my way. Because I won't need that embossing powder again. Now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to try to trim as closely to the flower itself as I can. Okay. Now I can go ahead and dispose of this part. So this is where the fun comes in, okay? We're going to grab our paintbrush and our Mod Podge, OK? 
Okay. And of course I want to put my ribbon here so that it will hang. Okay. If you're not doing that, you can put it in any direction. You know, like say you want to set it on a little thing and, and have it sitting in your house. That's what my neighbor, my neighbor did with hers. Um, she actually didn't put it on the tree. She said she liked it so much. She kept it in her bedroom. So as a decoration. So I'm just going to do a coat of this right on top here. And, you know, I don't know if this really helps or not, but I like to go around the edge of the shell thinking that maybe it'll make it a little stronger and it won't crack um, because the edges are very sensitive and they can crack at any point. So if you're going to ship these to anyone, um, I really suggest um, you have to put these in bubble wrap. Okay. It just got to be done. So at this point, I can set this for just a second. Oops, hold on, no, I lied. Let me put this upside down again real quick. The side that I want it on, and I'm just gonna guesstimate where I'm gonna put my flower. Okay, and I'm thinking, I like to stay out of the way of this little piece, like the holes, shall I say. So I try to work around the holes, okay, as much as I possibly can. And okay, so that's good enough. Um, now I'm going to grab my Mod Podge, okay, and I'm going to move this out of the way real quick. I just need to get an idea of where I was going to place it, and I'm going to do a heavy dose of this Mod Podge, okay. because I need it to sit on there. I'm just pressing it with my finger real quick just to get it in place. Okay, if you're missing any Mod Podge, you can slide your brush under there. Okay, and then now we're gonna go straight on top of the shelf. Now, if you did not use the um, embossing stuff you will have to um, paint much lighter than what I'm doing okay so basically you wouldn't be able to press down as heavy as I'm doing so see I'm just going underneath here lifting this up trying to get more Mod Podge down that's already dried and then go right back on top of it okay you really don't want any air bubbles, actually. So, and this shell is being a real pain in my booty. I've never had that happen before. Not sure what's up, but. Oops, I'm going to grab one of my pokey tools and I'm going to break that and push it down in there. Okay. Use a little more Mod Podge. And then for this portion, just going to push that right on top and Mod Podge that down. Now, if you try to use Distress Ink with this, what's gonna happen is, is it will smear, okay? So you really need to use a permanent ink, okay? and then kind of bake it in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use my heat on it again. Just to dry it up real quickly. You could just let it dry on its own actually if you want to, that's up to you. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna wait a few minutes. I'm gonna let it just air dry the rest on its own. I don't want to um, start painting on it yet until it's cooled off and is completely dry. Okay, so I will be back. Okay, so you can really start. I'm going to move this up a little bit, get the camera a little closer. 
shall I say. Um, I like to start with a stem first, okay? And how I like to do and how I like to paint, really, in all honesty, is I like to start off with my lightest color. And so I'm going to use Giddy About Green. Okay, this is a pearl color. So I'm just going to get some water. Okay, and I'm going to get it kind of pasty. I like to get my watercolor kind of thick. Um, so, and I'm just going to do the whole section right here where I want it green, okay? Going to go over that. And then I'm going to grab my jewel color. This one's called Emerald City. And I'm going to use a little bit of that. But before I do that, I'm going to pop my heat gun real quick to dry that real fast, okay? And I'm just going to use my very, very, very tip of this paintbrush, okay? And I don't try to get too much water in when I'm doing my, my darker sections. I don't know how to really describe that, but I like it really thick. And you'll know when you use shimmers um, how to make your paints thicker and thinner, okay? It's just adding more water or using less. Um, I'm sorry. I'm grabbing a little wipey here real quick so I can wipe off my brush in between brushes. And I'm going to clean a little bit of this up. I went over a little bit and I'm not liking that. So let me get out my... Which one was this? Oh, sorry. Giddy about green again. Oops. And I'm going to, oops, I need to add a little more water. Okay. Wipe off my brush, add a little bit more water. And then I'm going to come back in here and just re-highlight my section. Okay. And then go back in here again with a dark. If you want it even darker, that's where you're going to come in with your um, Perfect Pearls, okay? And it also kind of gives it a 3D effect, so your embossing powders are fun to do this with. Okay, and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it over here onto the lid, okay? Because I'm not trying to paint... <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin all my embossing powder. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go right on top. I think I need a little more water. Okay. Just grab the very tip here. And I'm just kind of patting it in. The areas that I want it. I think it still needs to be a little thicker. There we go. I'm actually not really sure what it is about the embossing powder. This may not, the embossing powder may not work with the other embossing stuff that I used on it already. It's just acting strange. So I guess I'm just going to have to use the uh, shimmers. So, sorry, scratch the perfect pearls on this particular project. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and blow this real quick. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to leave these two out. I'm going to start moving into another section of the flower, okay? So again, I'm going to start off with my lighter colors. And so I think I'm going to use uh, First Blush, okay? And I'm pretty much going to go over the entire flower, except for the stems, with this color. I'm going to try to thicken that up there. There we go. Looking good now. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to pat around all my little areas that I want colored. And this is so light, you're barely going to see it right now at this point, but it does work, I promise. And I'm trying to keep the paint off the black lines. I'm going to go in here. And I'm just going to keep going around. And just keep going. I'm not going to touch these little stems. I mean, how would I say it? Like little pods? <laughs> I don't know what you want to call them. I better look that word up. But, um part that has a pollen, if that makes any sense. The little bulbs, I'm not going to paint on those yet, but I am trying to go a little bit inside to make sure that I get all the underneath here. Need a little more water at this point. Okay, so at this point I can go with a darker pink and I'm going to go with, uh, this is, sorry, Peekaboo. This is a pearl color. As you can see, this is one of my favorites. And I'm just staying away from the areas that I want highlighted. Okay, then we're going to move in with our next color and that's going to be Beats Me and that is a pearl. adding some water here and now I'm just going to go in my deeper areas that well I like <laughs> Let 
Okay, let's try that one more time. Just going to go in these deeper areas that I want the darkest. Okay, so far I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm really kind of going to have to start layering this to get a little more color in here. I'm going to start back in with this middle color and kind of go over that. And then back in with the lightest. Re highlight my areas that I want lighter. This is what I have so far, and I think I'm going to go ahead and let it dry for now, and then I'll come back and finish it. Okay, I decided to use a little bit of acrylic paint, and what I do is I take what's ever left in the lid, and I add a little bit of water to it to water it down to make it almost like um, watercolors, okay? And I'm just kind of coming in here where I want even more of a highlight, okay? And see, I did a little too much there. And I'm patting it in here and kind of spreading it around. And the problem with this is, is that it will leave kind of stroke marks if you're not careful, which I can already see this in some of the areas. So I'm going to have to kind of clean that up. And wherever you want to clean up that, just grab your, clean off your paintbrush, dip it in the water, and then you'll be able to get in there again. And so I can see where it's starting to dry up and kind of crackle like acrylic paint would do. So let me just clean those areas up. I want to reestablish my black lines. Maybe a little bit here in here and I'm going to have to work quickly and in some of these areas I'm trying to um, mimic the strokes of how like a flower would look I don't know if that <laughs> makes any sense but that's what my intentions are trying to do here And if you feel like you did a little too much, you can always come back in and, you know, keep layering. That's just all there is to painting. It's pretty easy to do. I'm going to make this a little thicker. Come back in here and reestablish some of my darker areas, keeping those dark. Let me see, I might even come in with this Ruby Lost. Let me see how that looks. I'm going to try to make this pretty thick. And I'm going to try to paint my little bulbs this color. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and then I'm going to come back and do some finer detailing um, and then I'll be back. Okay, I decided to introduce another color in here and this is going to be it's called Pugmissius. 
Pugnicia's purple. Okay. Um, and let me just say that I just really wanted to add in some more shadows. Um, I kind of felt like the, I had too many of the same color blending all together. So this is my best bet of kind of adding in a little more shade, but giving more depth to this because it felt flat. And so you're going to want to add in a little more shade to your flat areas, okay? And I even add a little bit in there. Okay, I hope y'all can kind of see that. It definitely looks like it's starting to fill up and have more um, definite depth in here. And I'm going to grab some of this um, Imperial Amethyst and really um, try to get in get in here and add a little more down here and it's going to be hard because this area is already very small so I'm just trying to build on that Wipe off your paintbrush and you can clean up any mess you don't like. What I love about watercolors. We're going to introduce a little bit more of this in again because I just kind of overdid it last time. So, okay, I decided to add a few more little things here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this. This is one of the metals. This one's called Minor, Minor, Minor 49er. And this is gold. And I think I'm just going to add a couple gold specks. Not a couple, a few. Right on in here. And then I think I'm going to add just a little bit of the Meet Me at Sunset. And this is a pearl. I think this is the right name for this. It's coral, but I see that there's another meet me at sunset and this is yellow. So let me just, um, just add a little bit of more depth in here. Okay. It looks pretty good so far to me. Um, in fact, I think I'm done. All I'm going to do is start glittering this. So let me grab my Mod Podge and my paper to catch the glitter. And I usually do this in sections. So I just wet my brush and then dry off the excess water. Grab my Mod Podge, get my glitter ready. Okay. And I'm going to use the thinner one. This is extra fine glitter. So I'll probably start off with this whole section right at the top kind of here, bring it all the way to my art where I've got it, where my stamp is. Okay. And let me get out that one little piece there. Go ahead and start glittering. And I'm going to continue on. from the actual art itself because then you'll have glitter all over it and you won't be able to see it very well. We have a craft fair coming up at my church here in Vero and I'm going to be making a lot more of these. And so I just wanted to share this with you is one of the things I like to make for craft fairs that especially in the beach area <laughs> We'll sell. 
So I'm just going to set it aside to dry and then I'm going to add my ribbon on here. I'm probably going to use seam binding ribbon. That's one of my favorites. Um, you know, a lot of people in the, you know, selling world don't, I don't know if I want to say this right. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But a lot of people don't usually use that particular ribbon um, at craft fairs. So um, a scrapbookers do. So I think it'd be pretty neat to show that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me in this tutorial. I'll have the photos at the beginning of this video and the end. Um, and I hope that you share your projects with us as well. Um, definitely share them with Shimmers if you have uh, made one. And definitely on my um, Facebook page, Salty Beach Scrappers. Um, so I would love to see you join. So thanks. I hope you all have a wonderful and fabulous day, guys. Bye, y'all.